All right, welcome back. Fox 5 News on the Hill, 845, if you're keeping score at home because you didn't change your clocks this morning. Got a lot to talk to you about the Trump administration. North Korea, tariffs, the latest shakeup at the White House, and, of course, that little story about the adult film star uh, Stormy Daniels suing the president of the United States. We want to talk about the polit political fallout from it all. With us is Democratic strategist Drew Lippmann, Republican commentator Jesse Jane Duff. Thank you both for being with us today. Uh, the, one of the things that's... Topping the headlines this morning, last night's speech, uh, the president bringing up the feel of the campaign trail again, attacking some of his favorite things, attacking his favorite thing to do, attacking the press. Let's listen to a little bit, and then I want to get some reaction. He's on talking about Chuck Todd, calling him sleepy, some cursing in there, uh, and oh, we've got it. You ever see the story where I'm? It's 1999. I'm on Meet the Press, a show now headed by Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd. He's a sleeping son of a bitch, I'll tell you. And they showed it this morning, 1999, and I'm talking about North Korea. You got to take him out now. So, Jesse, he also brought in his 2020 campaign slogan. We do see many versions of President Trump. Yes, we do. <laughs> Is it going to continue to work as we approach 2020? I, I think it has worked because uh, he knows when to give a presentation with the teleprompter and he's very cautious in, uh, with his words, but he also understands who his base is. And this speech last night, we have to recognize, are for the people that actually voted for him. They don't want him to change. They don't want him to be polished. And in fact, in that speech, he addressed that. He says, oh, I can be presidential. And he mimicked previous styles of speaking and the audience was booing him. He says, I like to be me. And and I think his voters appreciate that. Uh, Drew, one of the reasons the president was up there last night was not just to call Chuck Todd names. Right. Because they have a congressional election up there right now. And that is a should be a safe Republican district. And it's not right now. Um, what, what are the larger risks right now as Republicans have been going around these special elections and they are starting to see racist challenge that shouldn't be challenged? You're right. Uh, this is a district that Trump won by 20 points mm -hmm. in 2016. It had a very, very conservative congressman, Tim Murphy, there. If Rick Cohen, the Republican for whom Trump appeared, loses or even wins in a close race, mm -hmm. that's a very negative sign for Republicans. If you look at the results of special state legislative seats, Democrats running way ahead of Hillary. And is that what you think we saw on tap last night, the president trying to kind of put the band back together in, in his essence? get that kind of fervor whipped up and try to reconnect with those voters who, you know, handed him that district soundly. Yes, re the reconnect is important. I'm not sure he knows or even cares whether his appearance is good for the Republican candidate. Mm -hmm. I think he loves rallies. He loves those crowds. He feeds on that. If you've got a ready made crowd for him, he's there. One thing the president probably doesn't love is the fact that Stormy Daniels has stayed in the headlines uh, and continues to do so. And it brings me back to that that regular quote that we say with a lot of things, it's not the story, it's the cover-up. Uh, I don't think the story is getting as much headway because president, it's not as shocking coming out of President Trump. I don't know if that's coming out right what I'm trying to say but after the Access Hollywood tape I don't think we can be surprised easily but what people are focusing on really is this idea of the money the hush money that came from his attorney uh, Jesse I know you're a Republican but should the president be concerned about this well the president has already addressed these allegations and it has been resolved in arbitration so essentially it's up to the president to continue to hold his ground on what he has said. I don't think he needs but to be she's concerned. she's not going away. I if mean, he's, she's talking if he's, about pictures, she's I, more stories. We're talking about 2000, we're talking about over 10 years ago when he was a private civilian. Now, if he was the governor of New York, I think we'd have some concern here. With elected officials, there is a standard that we need to present. But the American people elected a man that they knew had uh, a very interesting and colorful past. We knew that. We brought him in because we recognized his success, and that's what we elected. So will Stormy Daniels go away? Of course not. Her name's Stormy Daniels. We know she's not afraid of press. She's not afraid of revealing herself in more than ways than one. And I think the president just has to hold his ground and continue to say this has already been resolved. Actually, her real name is not Stormy Daniels, but you know, you <laughs> right, talk about the not. cover up. <laughs> the story itself here is still pretty eye opening. I'm old enough to remember that when a president of the United States and a porn star were mentioned in the same story, that got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And Drew, I got to ask you, if Barack Obama 
was in a situation with an adult film actress with payoffs in the hundreds of thousand dollars, I would think that the Republicans in Congress, conservatives, family value conservatives, would be doing somersaults to get yeah. hearings started and to look into what has been going on with the commander in chief of the United States, because this opens a whole hornet's nest of things that could be used against the commander in chief. Exactly. I think, I think the legislative process would have shut down. Every single congressional committee would be issuing subpoenas right now. But I think you just touched on the most important aspect of this, and it has very little to do with the president's sex life. It's was he susceptible to blackmail at any point in his life? And the fact that he was paying essentially a blackmailer's ransom just before Election Day in 2016 should be a subject of major concern. And Drew, though, your point, though, about maybe the difference in the reaction from the Republicans versus the Democrats is one that has been discussed. I know you worked with Al Franken, the idea that he resigned over photos. And I'm not dismissing the significance of the photos, but you do seem to see a difference in the way Democrats turn on their own and Republicans are standing seemingly standing by the president through this. Is that a problem for your party? Um, I hope it's not a problem for my party because I hope there's not a lot, a lot of this to worry about down the road. But uh, Democrats do impose a high standard. They take the standard seriously. And, and Democrats have been willing to take the hits, whether they should have or shouldn't have. With Republicans, they are supportive of Trump, at least that base, that 40 percent of the electorate. It seems right up to the end. There's nothing he can do to alienate them. Jesse, it seems like the last thing that this White House needed was another forest fire in its midst. Mm -hmm. How much of a distraction is this in the sense of things that they have to deal with and how much of it is good for them because every day the news cycle points one way or another to another brush fire coming mm -hmm. up somewhere or another. Well, we all can recognize uh, doing what we do that there's never been a dull day. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a dull week, not a dull weekend with his administration. Mm -hmm. And I think it can actually invigorate his base even more so because they feel that he's under some form of attack. I do have to disagree. Republicans have taken out plenty of their people under mm -hmm. scandals, plenty of them. I think what they're waiting for is the factual evidence of it. We're dealing with a woman who has a tumultuous past herself. Now, if she had been maybe with a different history, they may be less uh, inclined to, to side with the president. But uh, yes, I agree. Porn stars are something that people would be talking about. But he was not an elected official when this happened. If we do find out it was he a ransom. He wasn't an elected official when it happened now, but he's the president of the United States now. Absolutely. That's why this matters. It's we got to wrap it up. Uh, Jesse Jane Duff, we appreciate you coming in. Drew Lippman as well, too.